Hello, everybody, and welcome back to The End is Nigh! I know, we're, we actually, like, there's a whole bunch of shows that we're doing now that are like, didn't this die? No. Surprisingly, oh. it didn't. Anyway, I'm joined by my delightful partners in Biznos, uh, Time Knight, and Zombie Cam. Hey, what's up? Yo. Howdy. Gentlemen, it's been a few weeks since the last time we've been able to sit down and hash out some of our uh, ideas for our future business investments. And unfortunately, in that time, we have been having a lack of success with our previous suggestions. So, I want to clear the board and get in some new ideas. You know, fresh blood. Ugh. Uh, time night, I, I know for a fact that you have been sitting on something that you think... Uh, is going to be able to, you know, really kind of reinvigorate this company. Uh, so yeah, 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 yeah. It, it, yeah. Well, let's see. Um, all right. Uh, to to start, I'll I'll just give you some a little preference for this. Um, back in, I believe November, it was was that like two years ago in November, like. Um, the channel NBC has been doing like uh, live uh, musicals like every November or so. Hmm. Um, the the first first year was Sound of Music, and and they'd always have like um, celebrities like in some of the roles. Like the first one was Sound of Music, and they had like country music star. Uh, what's her name? Uh, I keep on forgetting who. Mariah Carey. No, not her. Jay Z. Probably, probably. Yeah. Okay, yeah. Probably Jay Z. I'm, I'm pretty sure that's one of the country individuals. And uh, uh, and 2014 they did Peter Pan and they had uh, Christopher Walken as Captain Hook. So. Oh, okay. So keeping the the musician theme going then. Yes, because everybody remembers um, Christopher Walken's. Um, um, that video where he was flying around? Yeah, yeah, that, that, that was the best thing ever. Right, no, that makes sense. Uh, the, the, him establishing the fact that he could, in fact, fly was uh, pretty astonishing, and I yeah. can see why which that is, would land him the role of Pan. Which is why he was yeah. uh, cast in Peter Pan. It makes sense, yes. Makes sense. So, anyways, um, my, my idea is we have to get in on on this. We've got to... Send in suggestions to NBC for um, the 2015 edition of their their musical thing, uh, musical. So that's a good who idea. Who better to um, who better to um, nominate for for a role in their in their in music their um, musical than America's sweetheart? Willem Dafoe. And, I love this idea already. And I believe we should... And I also have an idea for the, the musical. We're going for that classic musical. Um, well, it's actually... I'm caught between two, but the one that I've been thinking most about was... Um, uh, shoot, I think I'm... I'm sorry, guys. I'm, my I, I, mind is going blank for us. I you know, that, for that, us. that happens, especially when an idea as incredible it's, as this comes oh, up. Oh, man. It's like trying to get... Maybe you, you described the, the musical in question it, we could we should uh, be able to uh, Hold on. Ah, there it is. There it is. The qu qu classic love story, West Side Story. Mm, uh, mm. And we we should we're getting him in on the lead as um as the shark, right? Uh no no um the As a, as the jet? As, as the the jet the, the jets are are the quote unquote good guys? I don't know. Nobody's really a good guy in the that. I, I I think the important point is that in that film, the, the, the Jets are one of the two people, and the jets, they yeah, might the have jets. been the white people. I don't actually remember. Yeah, the white people. Yeah, I don't remember, and I think it would be racist to say that the Jets or Sharks should have to be 
white or Hispanic or whatever the other people were in that one. Or which one is the good guys? But we'll just say that the Jets are are the good ones and the Sharks are the bad ones without making any sort of judgment about which the good ones were or the bad ones were. Well, anyways, it's, it's based on Romeo and Juliet, so... Right, what? which was also about Hispanics and white people in New York. Exactly. Yes. That's Exactly. That's... Shakespeare was very ahead of his time. Exactly. Anywho, um, we need to... Um, dang, that's pretty much the whole premise of what my idea was. I, I thought that I, was going to up. You know what? I, I think you've got a pretty solid concept going on there. I'm not going to yeah. lie. I think it could use a little bit of workshopping. I think... Yeah, that's what I was kind know, of hoping for. Yeah, you see, I think Defoe, his main musical style, as we are all aware, is hardcore gangster rapping. So we're really going to need to push that. Oh, yeah, yeah. We probably need to... Or, we're, we, we're could add, to... or we could could do a remake of, of West Side Stories for film mm. and modernize it a because film this year of West Side Story. I like it. It's bold. Yeah, it's new. It's interesting. And, or, and we could do what the the new the the new um addition, uh, the new remake of Annie Wood did this year and set it in modern times. That's a good idea. So we can incorporate Willem Dafoe's gangster rap Indeed. style. I like this already. Okay. You know who? What? What group of rappers I am aware of, and therefore the kids are probably also aware of. Uh, who? The Wu Tang Clan. So they. So Willem Dafoe is the leader of the Wu Tang Clan, who are I'm fairly certain black and also rappers. So Willem yeah. Dafoe is is their head, their their uh, their clan leader, their clan's chief. Mm. A wi the, he's he's like a rapping wizard, if you will. Uh, yes. And this this wizard up with sort of beard and cloak wizard hat. Yeah, exactly. He has he has a big exactly. he has, he has, yeah. he has robes. Yeah, I mean he's part of a clan. He's you know he's a part of the Wu Tang Clan with his robes and his wizard ha his pointy wizard hat, and he is rapping about about the problems he sees yeah. in the world, uh, with the, with the people that his clan does not like, uh, which yeah. in this case would be white people. Uh, namely, the Jets, who are, of course, in a modern reimagining, the staff at NASA, as they are really the most Jet-like individuals we can we can think of. I mean, like, let's face right. it, it's that or the New York Jets. Which, now that I think of it, Willem Dafoe, Grand Wizard Willem Dafoe and his Wu Tang Clan, are rapping off against the New York Jets. Who are muscling in on their turf, uh, but the Jets' uh, newest quarterback, who is the first lady quarterback of the Jets, falls in love with Willem Dafoe. Okay, so who should play play um, the um, the female quarterback? The of female the Jets. quarterback of the uh, of the Jets. Well, obviously, obviously. We need an individual who can represent both New York and the Jet spirit. So I think Taylor Swift is basically the only logical choice. Uh, she is is a quarterback, but she is also a human being. And despite the fact that she is from a different culture than Willem Dafoe, uh, the two of them can see past those differences, the differences that have kept the Wu-Tang Clan and the New York Jets, you know, fighting for so long, and and realize that love is blind to the rap game and football. And finally answering the question, question, can love bl bloom on the battlefield? In fact, it can. But more importantly, and the tagline for this movie, can love blossom on the football field? Which, of course, is a spoiler for the big conclusion in which the Wu-Tang and the New York Jets engage in a rap-slash-football you know, battle 
on New York Jets field or whatever that field is called in which they must, you know, you combine their mad skills to really, you know, bring together into a new sport called raffable. 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 Mm-hmm. Yes. It is of course. heartwarming. It is uplifting. And in the end, Willem Dafoe takes off his pointy wizard cap and says, This is dumb. I don't want to wear this. It's racist to white people. And throws it on the ground. And everyone says, Yes. White people do not be deserve to be mistreated by individuals calling themselves wizards wearing pointy hats and robes. Because that's just racist. Exactly. Yeah. It, it's a valuable exactly. lesson. It's a valuable lesson. It's, it, yeah. Yeah, I, th- I think this could work. I think this it is. It's a completely uh, different direction than what I had intended, but... It, it is. It is. And it's bold. I will admit. Uh, it yeah. is extraordinarily changing, bold. We are, um... we, we are, we are basically uh, getting into things that some people would say you shouldn't make it, jokes about. Like... It, it, Willem Dafoe as the wizard of the Kukla, of the uh, sorry the Wu Tang Clan. Oh, Whoa! <laughs> almost um, said something. Wow. Almost said the wrong thing. Talk about a Freudian slip. <laughs> Talk about a Freudian slip, dude. Uh, but, well, people might say that that is a thing that you should not ever joke about because it's horrifyingly offensive. But truly, in the pursuit of money, nothing is too offensive. That is true, and and I kind of feel like it's a little it's a risky move, and we're move to be kind of all art is risky they yeah, said we're they said it Hitler modern was day, bold kind of stray, we're kind of straying away from from the original the idea of, of putting on a show I know it's we're, we're going into avant-garde film yeah. musicals we're going into the deep end of sophistication the bottom scraping mm-hmm. The bottom of the cultural barrel, if you will. Yes, and, and, and there there will be people who who criticize us, saying this is not what what the creator of West Side Story would have ima- intended for this show. And he, be... he did not intend for Willem Dafoe to put on a wizard cap and robe and start rapping while playing football. This is not what he meant, but. You know what? Screw them. Screw all of them. You hear that, critics? Screw you. If you think this is offensive or wrong or stupid, that is because you are ignorant. Mm -hmm. Bold. Bold stance. Bold stance. I like it. I like it. Uh, Zombie Cam, you're from Australia, a land known for its boldness. What what, what ideas do you have for us today? What, What concept... Are you going to expand the artistic horizons of the entire United States with? Hit me with your best shot. So Fire my away. idea, separate to Brandon's. All right. So a different idea. Different is idea. Payday, the heist. Payday, the heist. The right. movie, the game, the oh. experience. Dude, my mind is blown right now just boom lay this on me lay it on thick oh we buy an abandoned warehouse or a bank or something then we hire security guards Mm. then we put out advertisements for people to come to our warehouse buy weapons from us then they can shoot our security break into the bank and steal our money I like it. I like it. it it's it's but obviously, different. But obviously, we just send in bulldozers just to kill them. Oh! And get the money back anyway. Oh my god, it works on so many levels. It's oh, a yeah. twist within a twist. Pay us for the guns, obviously. So. But yeah, yeah. No, they, they buy the guns. They go in. They steal the money. They think they're winning like a lottery. But instead, we're killing them and taking their money. That is... Mm. This is... This is so much. Yeah, yeah. So we're um also obviously going to. This Le- is obviously going to be. Um... Legally, it's troublesome. I I agree. I agree. We yeah. uh, we we're going to have a bit of trouble, uh, getting the paperwork passed through to uh, willingly murder, 
a large number of people. Yeah, we're we're going to have to have them sign waivers. Oh, they're going to be signing that yeah. contract. They will be signing so many contracts because we are we are not getting That's... sued for mass murder again. Yeah, yeah. You know, we we learned um, our lesson last time. Uh, I, I, I think yeah. there is a way we can do this. We have them sign something, but it'll be unrelated. Uh, you know, no one reads fine print, so we just we just tell them it's a contract for something else. They come up, they show up, and we can then claim in court that they just showed up at our warehouse full of our money uh, that we hired a security force to guard and started murdering our security force. And so we had no recourse but to kill them uh, and mm. steal all of their cash, which I believe is the law of the United States. That it, That is legal in the U.S. Yes. So... Most yeah, sure. mo mo Stay. most of the U.S. We'd probably have to do it in the South, obviously, but yeah. You know. So, so, so probably I I could probably help with, probably help with that. I could scout out some locations and stuff. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, I I remember Florida has a rule about standing one's ground, and I think oh yeah we yeah, can yeah. use that. Yeah, we can use that to make sure our bulldozers, as long as they don't move. They are standing on one spot on the ground, so they should be able to get away with that pretty easily. And the Floridian courts are obviously utterly incompetent, so it'll be it'll be pretty easy getting past them. Oh yeah, yeah, we mm. could probably get get um uh, G money to we find might us a, a nice... not want to have G money in the court with us at the time if we want to get away with it though. I I I don't want to say it might tip a Floridian court opinion of us uh in the other direction uh but i think that uh, he'd be great for a location scout and for uh and for obviously helping us hire everyone just you know the police and the judges might want to think that the only people involved were us we're us, okay. you okay. know, ju just just for legal safety. I think uh, might be a good idea. It, it is Florida, after all. All right, yeah. all right, then. Yeah, be safe. So, all right, so um, uh, I was also thinking we could mm -hmm. have a child version. Ooh, everything child. slightly smaller, but instead of guns, we get equalizers. I like it. No one likes killing children, even in Florida. Not a big fan of killing children. However. Mm. Tranking children? I mean, come on. Basically, it's not even a crime. I mean, hell, we could yeah. probably just shoot them up, you know, yeah. right outside of their school, and no one would give a crap because it's, it's tranks. It's tranks. Who gives a crap about tranks? And I mean, yeah, they think they're gun for a second. They go like, get a bit worried. Then they see it's oh no, it's just oh yeah, it's just a tranquilizer it's fine. gun. The kid is not dead. I mean, obviously, he might be unconscious, but I mean, like. The only blood that's coming out of him is the one, stuff that came out from when he bumped his head. I think, uh, you know, people are gonna people are gonna realize that, and it'll be funny. It will be amusing good. to them. So, yeah. So if <clears throat> so, yeah. I, I, I go, then should... with your idea of the school, right? Hmm. So we we get in a van, a white van. We paint a red cross on it. Right, oh. ambulance. That's all you need to become a real ambulance. That's true. That's true. We can then yeah. claim, we can claim if anyone asks us about why we are loading the children into our van to take their money, that we are part of an ambulance, that we yeah. are from the hospital uh, of Florida. Florida, uh, Floridians will buy that. Let's be, let's be completely honest. I don't think anyone who lives in that state will look at a white van with a red uh, X painted on it and think anything other than ambulance. Yeah. Uh, I think as, that especially this if be we, okay. if we paint ambulance on it as yeah, well. Yeah. So. And like, We're going to uh, have to do that too. Yeah. Let's face it. Again, Florida. Florida. You know. Yeah. But then we train the children up to become security guards. Oh my God. Right. It all oh connects. My. We don't. We don't need to pay them. Oh we man. We get free labor. We feed them just. We get some slop. Yeah, I, I know a pig Full farm. Circle. Yeah. Oh my god! It's an Ouroboros. It is the Ouroboros mm. of money. I love it. I love it. Oh. Well done. Well done. Yeah. Just. I. I almost feel like we could stop now, and be set for life, but we're not. We are going to take this 
as far as it will go until someone stops us, which will probably be soon. Let's be honest, we are yeah. horrible human beings. But that's fine, because in the pursuit of money, nothing is wrong, everything is permitted. The ends yeah. just... They all means. Fair and also all love, the racism. All's fair in love and more and getting money and stuff. Exactly. Exactly. So, here's my idea. And I'll admit, it's a little bit out there. But especially since, uh, since Zombie, you did mention... Uh, something like this. I think that uh, I think that we're going to be able to really kind of turn this around. See, parents, they 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 get weird about tracking kids. You know, like they if it's someone else's kids, they're like, yeah, whatever. But like as soon as you start tracking their kids, it's something like, oh, oh no, you shot my child. You know, I yeah. deserve restitution for my child's injury and brain damage, and then getting shot by uh, people who then murder and. What better way to pay them back than the thing that all families, regardless of how many living children they still have, enjoy? Amusement parks. Oh, I'm sorry. What did I hear? Did someone say themed amusement parks? Well, I wasn't going to go that far, but since you insisted, imagine if you would. You enter the gates, they swing wide, and you find yourself in a realm of fantasy. A world not just of roller coasters and candy co cotton candy machines and haunted houses and mirrors, but also a world of Grand Theft Auto. For oh. what child does not want the Grand Theft Auto experience. I have seen oh. children, and children tell me that the Grand Theft Autos is the great game, and that they have paid for it, and then their sisters and parents snap the discs in half because of how, you know, horrible and offensive they are. But I think those kids, what they really need is not a video game, because video games rot the mind and destroy morality. No, no, no. They need hands-on real life experience with the Grand Theft Auto. The true mm. Grand Theft Auto. Grand Theft it Auto be very Land. popular in Australia. Excellent. I heard Target it was so popular that Target had to ban it just to prevent people from murdering one another to get their hands on the games because of how popular it was. Oh man. Yeah. It was nuts. So first you walk in, and everyone knows that in the Grand Theft Autos, it is all about the stealing cars. After all, it is in the name. So the very first thing it's you true. do to prove that you are this tall to ride, instead of that, there will be a car strapped to a metal rail. And you get in the car, and you buckle up, and then the car is shot over the rail and goes on the whole roller coaster thing of like spinning around and knocking back and forth and getting dropped into water, and maybe smashing into, like, a concrete barrier or something. I, I don't know, whatever cars and roller coasters do. And if, by the end of it, you are still able to walk and want to go into the park, you are definitely tall enough for that ride. Oh, so, yeah. Yeah. So, it's kind of like a post? It's like a post, but more car-like. And exactly. also with more crashing. So, so it's like, uh, I don't know what I'm trying to say right now, okay? You don't have to say anything. All you have to do is say with your ears by listening. Because that's not all. What is the other thing that everyone knows about Grand Theft Auto? Um, you can Murdering kill hookers to get money. Bam! Exactly. Now, obviously, we're not going to encourage people to murder women. Because, I mean, that would be bad, right? We're going to simulate killing women by having all the concession stands run by attractive ladies. And instead of buying food, you buy fake knives that you then stab them with and take your meal based on what knife you use to fake stab them. For real. Okay. <laughs> fake knives are expensive. So, the kids go in... 
we have already, you know, ensured that they are mature enough to get into an unsafe vehicle and be thrown around violently. And so they are at that point definitely mature enough to realize the difference between simulated stabbing women to get things and real stabbing women to get things. Which I think is an important distinction that kids can grasp. I mean, these actresses are going to be really selling the hell out of the, the out of the performance. So hopefully the kids will be a little bit fooled by all the screaming and the fake blood and the real blood. Because again, we're not going to buy like 50 fake knives. That would just be unbelievably prohibitively expensive. Mm -hmm. uh, so, you know, there's going to be a lot of screaming. There's going to be a lot of gore. However, however, kids are smart. Kids are smart. They're going to be able to tell the difference between that and an actual real murder. And so the kids get hands-on experience with something that they may eventually have to deal with in the real world, but in a safe, comfortable environment. Man, and I mean, that's important. Mean, mean, the first time I had to deal with a dead... With a dead lady. With a dead lady. I, I mean, I, I wish that I had had... Prior at experience. At least prior yeah. exper experience when I was a kid. Uh, I do so too. I know, so I know... How to, I, to I tell you, get rid of the body, how to cover and, it up and stuff. And, and how to loot it quickly. I mean, like, you play a video game, and it's just like the, the, the stuff is right there. But I mean, in real life, you have to search. You, know, you have to really kind of dig around there. You have to, you have to get in the pockets. You have to find out if, if there's too much blood on the thing that you wanted in the first place. And maybe you just wasted your time. And I will tell you something. I used to work with kids, and the number of time those kids would, you know, end up just as a shrieking... Uh, nervous wreck incapable of of dealing with the fact that they'd just taken another human life it was ridiculous I mean really honestly these kids you know it's like <laughs> what did you expect to happen I mean now you're useless I have to you know figure out a way of preventing you from talking because I mean Christ knows I'm not going to jail for you and, and it's just ridiculous I mean it's putting the kids in danger honestly not letting them get this experience because then they end up just pissing off the, their mafia contacts when they need to kill someone and not squeal. I mean, if anything, we could call ourselves, we could label ourselves a child protective service because we are teaching them these lessons that can save their lives. We are lifesavers, man. Lifesavers. So the Grand Theft, the Grand Theft Auto video games are like training wheels. But in, in many ways, yes. When we them into the amusement park, it's training wheels are off, but still sort of simulated in a it, way. It's like when you put a kid on a bicycle and you take the training wheels off and you walk with them while pushing them because hmm. you're still there holding their hand a little bit, but there's still the chance they could fall down and like break an arm or smash out all of their teeth or accidentally go down a hill too fast and get impaled on a tree branch. There is the we'll element of danger. Of exactly. There's an element of danger, but it's a controlled element because there is a guiding hand on their back in case anything happens that is, you know, not so uh, sudden as to not be able to uh, stop it. So it's fine. That's what we're providing. And that's not the end of it either. I mean, there's more to Grand Theft Auto than just vehicular theft and killing prostitutes and other women. There is also drugs. I was about to say that. I was just thinking that. I know, I know. And kids today, kids today, their knowledge of drugs is so weak. It, it is so, it is so ridiculous. I once went out uh, on the town with a bunch of my little, my youngest brother and his friends. And I went out and I decided, you know what? I'm going to be cool. I'm going to be the cool big brother and buy them a bunch of weed. And I will tell you something, the number of them who were just incapable of figuring out how to do it. They, they tried chewing on it. They tried eating it. Uh, one of them actually managed to try to eat, like actually successfully injected it into their bloodstream. I will admit, that was amusing. I didn't expect mm. they'd be able to get it that far in, but uh, they managed. They're a creative little guy. You know, if they had survived the experience, I think we probably would have gone along really well. Uh, but, you know, that's the thing. So many of them just 
failed, failed utterly to understand how to properly use marijuana. And that's just marijuana. That's not, that's not cocaine or heroin. I mean, if I brought them barbiturates, what do you think was going to happen? Nothing good, I can tell you. You know, these kids are so, so underprepared for drugs. It's sad. You know, there are kids in other countries. Do you know that America and Britain and Australia and other countries in the so-called thir- first world have children who have less experience with drugs than most children in other parts of the, of the world that are not America? That's sad. That's really mm. sad. Our nation was not founded on the principles of not doing drugs. Okay, the Founding Fathers didn't come to the New World and say, hey guys, this place is pretty great, let's not do drugs here. I mean, I mean that it's in the Constitution. It is. It, it's it, like... In the look. original Constitution, before they rolled it up and smoked it, it was very clearly stated that all the children should do all of the drugs at least once so that they would understand them and be able to better cope with them in a real-world environment. Because the pioneers knew that maybe someday the kids would have to deal with drugs. And what better way to teach them how to say no to drugs than to have them not say no to drugs by doing them. We could also start an outreach program for Hmm. the third world car. That's a good idea. That is a good idea. We bring in kids from underprivileged uh, parts of the world who are who are high on, on the drugs and who are, are suffering. And we can have them teach our kids what that's like so that our kids stop acting like such arrogant little dicks about it. Right. I think there's going to be a bit of an outcry by some mother's <laughs> groups and... Oh, God. Mother's groups. Uh, I'm going to be a little controversial here and say that feminists are ruining everything by telling us how and how not to murder women and feed drugs to children. I mean, man, it's getting ridiculous. It's getting a little silly. Yep. Yep. Yeah. I mean, feminists are ruining. I mean, like fucking everything man just because i'm a man who likes murdering women suddenly that makes me you know like some bad guy you know it's like oh do i hate women no nothing makes me happier than murdering them there is no greater level of respect than that and and yet somehow it's like oh no he must have an irrational hatred of women just because of all the ones he's murdered that is so close-minded it is so ugly of an attitude to to take you know i feel discriminated against you know i feel that there is a minority of men in this country who like butchering women and and who are unfairly looked down on and 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 mistreated by you know the 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 women in government who say you know oh you can't kill people. Like, and all the white knights and the police who say, that's a crime. Oh, I'm sorry. I thought this was America. Okay, I thought this was a free country. Apparently not. It's apparently it's Nazi, famine Nazi Germany. You know? <laughs> I mean, <laughs> it is an idea. I, I feel if? like my, my... I feel like feminists are discriminating against me and my right to objectify women. I know. It's so... It is, it is horrible. It is horrible. And I, I for one, am sickened by it. But the zombie cam, you know what? Because this is not... This is not feminazi and nigh. This is... The end is nigh. You are a man. You have the right to speak. So speak. You want to say something. What if we create camps with the money from the payday to... Okay. Experience, uh, the heist, the, ga- the movie, the game, the experience... Hmm. What if we created camps for re-education of I these like people, it. so we could bring them back into society? I think that's a good idea. You know, I, I've Treating seen this. Fairly. I've seen ideas like this on YouTube comments, and I think the YouTube commenters 
might be going for something right here. I think that they might have the right idea. We take people we don't like and we re-educate them to think like us so that they are no longer disagreeing with us. Which will really solve the problem. If no one is complaining about an issue, that issue does not exist. And if there people no are complaining about the issue, the issue only exists because they're complaining about it. Hmm? Hmm? So mm. therefore, to stop sexism in this country, we merely need to put anyone who has a problem with sexism in a re-educational camp to teach them about how they should stop being worried about sexism in our country. I think this is a good idea. Not gonna, yeah. not, not, it'll go over really well. I like it. I like right. it. And we can expect other countries from America and... Yeah, you know, and uh, we can... I'm not, I'm not entirely sure how we can get more offensive than, than where we already are, but I, I'm thinking, I'm thinking hard, okay? We... Hmm. Hmm. I mean, we're, 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 kind of like the, we're kind of like the rock bottom of 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 hideous of hideousness, but I, I, I've take got to away a... black people's right to vote. Okay, there you go. That that's that's drilling down. That's drilling down. Whoa. I mean, uh, okay, this... that's that's it's probably drilling a little too far. We, we're probably striking <laughs> magma. Uh, oh. The the magma. Of, I mean, really, at this point, we've basically like driven so far beyond the point of rationality that anyone who still believes that we believe a single thing we we have said over the last hour is clearly mentally disturbed. Uh, not that there is anything wrong with people who are mentally disturbed, as they, many of my best friends are mentally disturbed. Not, not mentally disturbedist. So I think the important thing to take away from all of this is Willem Dafoe should be in West Side Story. That I think we, yes. we can all agree? Yeah. We can believe. I can do that. Excellent. Then, gentlemen, I think we have a plan. We'll re-meet next week to find out how well our current plans are going and possibly rethink our business stratagems. All right. All right. We'll see you guys. Do it. Hopefully in less time than, like, six fucking months. All right, then. Bye. <laughs>